If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump, so we start out by talking about my self-quarantine. For the next uh, few episodes, you'll be hearing me through the phone. I got sick. That's right. I actually got sick. And so I'm doing the right thing by holding myself up in the house uh, and being depressed while Adam, Justin, and Doug get to enjoy the beautiful house up in Tahoe. We're going to have fun at your expense. (laughs) Thank you. Then we talk about Amazon at home learning um, and NCI. Okay. So look, here's what's going on right now, right? Economies go into crap, but some businesses are actually succeeding. One of them is online coaching. It's probably crushing right now. A lot of trainers aren't training people in the gym, but they are going to be training people virtually. We work with a company that provides online coaching certifications, actually certified trainers to do this online. So right now what NCI is offering is a free training webinar with Jason Phillips. And and this thing's all about how to build, operate, and scale a six-figure nutrition coaching business. So this is very valuable for all you trainers out there right now that might be out of work. Go check this out. It's totally free and it'll help you pivot your business during these uncertain times. Here's what you do. Go to ncicertifications.com forward slash mind pump. I talked about fenugreek thyme and ginger tea. That's what I'm using right now to help myself feel better. I'm also using Organifi's green juice and immunity. Now Organifi makes organic supplements. They are one of our sponsors. Uh, And of course, because you're a mind pump listener, you get 20% off. Just go to Organifi.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump to get that massive discount. Then we talked about San Francisco on lockdown, but not the weed shops. No way. Stay open. Not our weed. <laughs> uh, Justin got to talk about George Lucas, his uh, net worth, and the film's box office revenue. Uh, I talked about a show on Netflix that I'm watching because, again, I'm stuck at home. Love is blind. That sucks. Uh, but I do still refuse to watch Westworld. The boys keep trying to push me to do that. Ain't gonna Shame. Happen. <laughs> Shame your way. <laughs> then, we, <laughs> then we talked about whether or not this crisis is going to strengthen or hurt uh, Trump's chances of Trump's chances, excuse me, of staying in office. So we speculate whether or not uh, this is going to make it easier or harder for him to win re-election. We talk about airlines, restaurants, casinos, and how they're all pleading for bailouts. I thought it was funny that casinos are trying to get a bailout. Uh, I talked about how being homebound, uh, you can change your workouts and some of the things you can do at home to keep your body progressing. Uh, one of them being how you can lift heavy weights for with short rests. We also talk about all day workouts. And then I talked about the conspiracy uh, of whether or not coronavirus was created in the lab or uh, it was uh, it's natural. Then we got into the fitness questions. The first question was, is a gallon of water a day a real thing or is that just a myth? The next question, Are kipping pull-ups a great substitute if I can only do one or two strict pull-ups? The third question, what are our thoughts on combining a therapy practice with personal training? Therapy being talk therapy. So talk therapy with personal training, is that a good thing? And the final question, you know, we've discussed the importance of mobility work, but what if somebody is hypermobile? Hypermobile meaning very, very flexible without a lot of strength. Also, uh, we know that these are crazy, uncertain times, but this is also uh, no excuse to let your fitness slip. Obviously, you're stuck at home. You're going to want to still work out. You want to maintain your health. So here's what we're doing um, uh, until the end of March uh, or maybe longer, but definitely until the end of March. We are putting MAPS Anywhere 50% off. So this is a at-home workout program we designed to be truly effective, requires no equipment. All you need are bands and your body weight. It's half off. It's a full workout, right? So you go online, you click on the portal, you look at the exercises, you know what to do, you know what the workouts look like. Um, Again, it's very effective. It's going to provide your body with novelty. So if you're used to working out in the gym all the time, but your gym is closed, try MAPS anywhere, and you might be surprised your body might actually improve. So it's not a poor substitute. This might actually be the better substitute. This is how you get the 50% off discount. Go to mapswhite.com and use the code WHITE50. That's W-H-I-T-E-5-0, no space, 
or the discount. Justin and I, uh, as you can see, the the notes that we sent over this morning, Sal, like four hours worth of content. Yeah, we, yeah. we didn't uh, we didn't realize <laughs> until uh, recording yesterday without you. Fucking a, how much you talk, dude? Yeah, yeah, man. dude. <laughs> you feel so much like airspace, dude. It's amazing, <laughs> dude. I got a I got all these messages from people. Uh, they're all worried that I'm leaving. The, they, you know, your five year contract is up. <laughs> People actually believe that. I love it, dude. <laughs> no, no. So we need to tell. We should tell the audience what's going on. So, uh, so I got uh, pretty sick. Actually, I haven't been this sick in a very long time, and it, because it's a scary time. And my symptoms are all. You ready for my symptoms? Really bad cough, uh, okay. low grade fever. Uh, you know, sore throat. Um, you know, all the all the scary symptoms. Uh, so i you know I'm trying to do the right thing and self quarantine, which means uh, I can't be around you handsome fellows for the next couple weeks so we're gonna have to podcast uh through the phone like yeah, this so yeah, i don't know what to do with this weird boner yeah. Yeah, yeah. i don't know how to how to deal with it yeah, it's, it's it's better though than me just having to fucking talk to justin i tell you what dude his jokes are only <laughs> only funny when you say smart shit and then he he follows it up with stuff they're just not the hey, same man yeah they're not as punchy without you yeah well i, the, I need the, the setup guy well, I mean, you know, not a whole lot has changed aside besides the fact that I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm virtual now. I mean, I, I podcast naked anyway, so I'm still doing the same thing. Yeah, everything else is the same except I can't really see your guys' faces, which, uh, you no, know, that's that's kind of sad. You guys are both very handsome. Hey, so, so are you? I mean, obviously, I know you are. You're hopped up on all kinds of drugs and meds right now, trying to mend. But are oh you? God. Are how much? Uh, how much of the news are you following right now? Oh, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm reading it. And uh, as of right now, it doesn't seem like it's blowing up in the U.S. So, I, you know, it's weird. I think we're going to find out in a few months if this was a big overreaction or mm. if they did the right thing. I don't know, because uh, it's, it's huge, right? And all the schools are closed oh, yeah. for the rest of the year. Yeah, they said <laughs> till fall, which was pretty insane, man. I mean, that's that was crazy. I thought it was just going to be for a couple of weeks and then it was like business as usual. So, yeah, extreme. So- I don't know, but you know, like I said, I want to do the right thing, and I, I don't want to get anybody else sick. I mean, poor Jessica, she got it too. Um, so we're both at home, just shutting, you know, shutting things down. And my 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 dad's bringing us uh, food and and herbs and stuff. And you know what he does is he drops it off at the at the door and he leaves. So we open the door and then we go pick it up. So <laughs> yeah. nobody wants to. Do <laughs> that's the uh, <laughs> so that's the policy right now. You know, uh, obviously, drive by. I think uh, I think the last statistic I read that um, eighteen percent of of Americans are dealing with uh, layoffs already. That's happening. That's uh, sweeping the nation. I'm sure that it's going to increase. But there are some companies that are thriving right now, like your. Uh, your door dashes and grub hubs uh the, they te- they seem to be exploding right now and that's the the protocol is you you order curbside or you order delivery and then they they just drop it off at your house and then let you know hey it's at your front doorstep well dude my 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 mother-in-law she works for uh whole foods and uh you know they're a grocery store and everybody's everybody got raises mm. um i know amazon is looking to hire something like a thousand uh, more employees because people are going to be doing things online. So the economy is going to take a hit, but some 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 segments are going to be crushing. Yeah. Fitness space is interesting. The fitness space, I think everybody in the fitness space is freaking out because because the gyms are closing. But online coaching, uh, this could present this could present huge opportunity for well, online coaching. No, hundred percent. It's the time. It's if you haven't. I mean, we've talked about this on the show for some time. I mean, it's uh, what what united the the three of us trainers over five years ago was kind of seeing the writing on the wall that uh, we're, that we're moving more into this, you know, virtual social media space and that we needed to uh, establish ourselves there. And that's kind of a part of the reason why we're, we're at, we're at, I feel like now uh, everybody in that space is kind of being forced to, to figure things out, but you're seeing, so I'm seeing some really cool, positive stuff. There's some trainers that are getting creative. Um, did you see what uh, NCI is doing? I know, I don't know if, how much you're up on our news, with, uh, no, I was just gonna. I was just gonna ask you about that because NCI does online, all online coaching certification. So I'm, I would assume that they are probably, gonna, if they're not crushing, they're going to crush, right? Because all these trainers are going to be looking for online certification so they can continue to service their clients. Are they doing it? Uh, yeah, what's, what's going on with that? So they're offering a free webinar right now how to how to scale your you know, scale a six figure business. 
uh, virtually online for trainers. And it's a free webinar they're offering for our listeners. So that's really cool. It's it's on, on our partner link, and I'm you know at the intro, Doug, or you will actually put it in there so people can go after it. But that's really cool. And so I think we're going to see. You know, I, I think a lot of people are freaked out in our space right now, mm-hmm. but I think you're going to start to see some people start to figure things out. I'm I'm already seeing some trainers. I mean, we're, we have a lot of people in our community that own Prime, Prime Pro, anywhere. These are all at home equipment free type programs. They're teaching their clients now virtually that so that's working out really well yeah these webinars yeah. i've seen people kind of pop up with or it's a pretty cool thing too like so if um like you were thinking about going to a certification i know right now they're kind of uh stopping that in terms of like meeting in groups but they're offering a webinar or live streaming version of it instead uh for a lower price and so it's like you could still get the valuable education of it i know that nci i think was also looking into that because they were going to come to our facility uh in san jose and i think that they're going to be pivoting to something like that to offer as well Oh, that's that's awesome. But yeah, I wanted to tell the audience just my experience uh, even this this morning talking to you guys because, you know, I've been I've been at home sick and just whatever, feeling bad about myself. And you guys are up at the at the house up in Truckee. So nice up in the beautiful snow with a nice studio up there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, th- then you guys are like, oh, we're going to be up here for another week, Sal. I'm like, you son of a I'm like, you guys even <laughs> tell me you guys gonna be up there for another week. So, <laughs> so uh, I get on the phone because I'm all you know, about that. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm all inflamed and pissed off and, you know, sick or whatever. So I'm like, why didn't you guys tell me? And you guys are like, look, we don't want to be around you. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't shit. know how to tell you. It's like, I don't, and want, I'm like, your, I don't want your shit, bro. It, but it made perfect sense. I was yeah. like, oh, yeah. So, <laughs> that, <laughs> that shut me up real fast. So, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's not like we don't want to include you, dude. That's ridiculous. <laughs> this that sucks without you here, man. No, now, yeah, what's it like? What's it like up there? Is it because I know down here it seems like you know normal life around here in San Jose. It doesn't seem. To, although I'll tell you what, I went to the the, the doctors the other day because they were going to prescribe me some antibiotics. Because I, I was doing phone appointment with the doctor, and they thought, you know, just in case I had, uh, you know, if, if I get bronchitis, uh, they they prescribed me some antibiotics. So I went to the doctor's office, uh, the, the pharmacy or whatever. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a, you know, this, here's a funny thing too. I'm a hypochondriac anyway. So you can imagine what this is doing <laughs> oh, to my psyche. I know it was the worst possible person in the group. I think <laughs> uh, I was yeah. like, Oh no, <laughs> our bro, ambassador so, of health is down. <laughs> bro, so, no. so I had on, so check this out. Right. So I go to the, I go to Kaiser or whatever. You didn't get suited. On, you did not get suited up. Did you? Bro. I, <laughs> is there pics? Yeah. You have to show. Bro, pics. I had. I had on uh, latex gloves. I had on this like mask, like you know when you go when you do gardening. You know that's the only mask I had, right? So I had a oh big gardening, <laughs> gardening mask. I had my hoodie over my head, you know. <laughs> under any uh, under any other circumstances, people would have never let me in the building if I would have robbed the place. <laughs> and I was in there waiting for my medicine, sweating my dick off because my stupid mask. Those masks are not very comfortable, man. My face was all sweaty. <laughs> I'm sitting there like, and so anyway, I'm in there, and this dude walks in with this like Darth Vader looking homemade mask, which looked crazy. <laughs> yeah. And he comes up That's to me and he goes, uh, "Yeah." And I'm looking at the guy, and I'm like, "This guy's a weirdo, right?" Yeah. Anyway, he walks up to me and he goes, "Hey, uh, where'd you get your mask, dude? That's really cool. I like the way you're wearing." I'm like, "Oh shit, I'm the, I'm the other weirdo." <laughs> <laughs> Weirdos yeah, pretty, unite, yeah. yeah. But it, well, so um, so I've been doing a few things to treat kind of how I feel. So my my uh, my godfather is uh, and, and yes, he's an actual godfather, not like the godfather in the in the movies. You know, uh, people will be thinking, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But he uh, he's an herbalist. So he recommended that I take, uh, I, I, he, he, he sent me some ginger capsules, some fenugreek and thyme capsules. I guess the fenugreek and thyme are expectorants. So they, they thin the, muco- the mucus hmm. to help you, you know, get it out. Uh, ginger is uh, antiviral, anti-inflammatory. And so I make this tea with it and I drink it. And then I've been uh, crushing the Organifi green juice and, and immunity uh, three times a day, so we'll see what we'll see what happens here. But uh, I'm still still down and out. It's been what five days now. Yeah, I got a bunch so. of sh- a shit. Did you see my story on the Organifi juice? I got a bunch of shit from people. People can't take a no. Fucking, what happened? Uh, people can't take a joke. Somebody asked me like, "What do you do with 
limited supplies of food right now. What are you eating? And I said, Rockstar gummies and fucking and, and green juice for balance for more. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, it's funny about it, dude, because we went to the grocery store and there's it's like crazy. nothing there. So it's like your choices are limited. We're eating like processed meat and stuff because that was like all that was there. And so we've been down in the green juice like crazy trying that's to like just the, balance that's it that's out. That's the healthiest yeah. thing we're getting in right now. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, well, there's, there's no, there's like, like some frozen vegetables, but not enough, you know, too. We've been trying to eat that, but like, yeah, this has been totally helping us. This, this is all like this, that part right there, man made, uh, stupid panic and scarcity. Stupid. There's no reason. Oh, yeah, there's, that's frustrating. There's no, there's no reason for that kind of scarcity. Uh, right now, people are just freaking out. Did you uh, see the, did you see the post that bar barstool did? Like, I think it was yesterday, the day before, uh, of the asshole that had like you know one of the you know those big uh, Mercedes vans now yeah, you know Sprinter the, vans is that what they're called uh -huh. the one that we drove to the the airport the other day right yeah yeah, yeah. completely like, but completely empty it didn't have seats in it or anything like that filled to the top of fucking toilet paper <sighs> just driving around from store to store stocking up they're gonna be slinging it for like ten bucks a roll you know what it's I mean? the dumbest thing ever it's not like we're gonna go out we're gonna yeah. run out of toilet paper it's like gold that is yeah, it, it, yeah I silly i have one of those uh those little uh bidets uh you attach to your toilet seat yeah oh, so yeah. i'm set man if my if i run out of toilet <laughs> you, paper, you went all euro on us huh yeah all right i'll just be spraying see so yeah, i spraying it down and then just air dry or whatever justin no, it's, it's, justin volunteered to wash my ass so i'm yeah, good I, so I, I hose him down <laughs> yeah. every night yeah. Yeah. what are friends uh, what are friends for <laughs> what, a, what a nice guy yeah <laughs> it's, i don't know what i'm here for dude you got you can get it out of the hair and everything <laughs> oh, oh god oh. Dude. i need a power washer for that <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Listen, there's no short. So here's the deal. There's no shortage. You know what I've been doing since I've been sick? Hmm. Because I have, you know, I got food here at home that I'm saving too. But I'm like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to DoorDash. Every freaking restaurant is available for DoorDash. Yeah. I've been ordering. It's awesome. I've been eating like a king right now. Yeah. Well, you know what, too? There, you know, a lot of, I think uh, we've been trying to encourage, I've been trying to encourage people to do that to support your local businesses too. Yeah. Because you're, oh, yeah. if, if you're, makes perfect a, sense. yeah, if you're, a, if you're a mom pa shop right now that, you know, is used to having your restaurant doors open and you, re, you know, you rely on, you know, foot traffic every day coming in and out of there, you know, a lot of these people, uh, they're, they're, they're hurting worse than anybody else. So, um, I mean, that's, that's a big concern is taking, and it's a simple thing that we can do, right? Instead of freaking out over the grocery stores, I mean, order out for right now, order out and support your yeah. local business. You know what I was speculating about too, cause the takeout is, is still doing really well that I wonder how many people have signed up to become an Uber driver. Like if they've actually added, uh, you know, new people into the system just to, to get some extra cash, like while everybody's sort of on lockdown. Uh, I don't know if anybody's taking Uber right now. Would you? I don't know. That sounds like something. No, people are. No, it's, it, yeah, like because yeah. even in San Francisco, they allow that as one of the businesses to still be open. Yeah. Oh yeah. Do you know what else happened in San Francisco? What? Oh, tell so, me, dude. So they put them down. They they basically shut everything down, right? Yeah. And initially, they shut down the the weed shops. So they said, you know, yeah, what? no, no, no. No, no weed dispensaries. Keep those closed. And there was an uproar. What are we supposed People to were, do inside? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so they so so it's one of the they they consider it one of the ne the necessary you know businesses. <laughs> <laughs> so great. So you have the grocery stores. You Don't have the take our weed, man. Yeah, and and yeah, and you can get and you can get weed. So. That was my one mistake. We we left up in here in such a hurry. I got up here and just, at one point, Justin and I were sitting out. To, dude, wait till you get up. If well, if you get up here at one point, uh, the snow out here. I mean, we're we're probably in a good four to five. Dude, it's feet. waist if not up into the torso high. Yeah, and we were wow. Oh, at one point, him and I we went out to you know because he's got the kids coming tomorrow, so we went out to start building them a you know a little. Uh, sl what is sled slide whatever thing right so man made one right so we're out there oh, a, a, a sled slide yes yeah, sled slide you know what the fuck I meant right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a toboggan run yeah you know yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, a, yeah. so yeah. we're at we're at which cool was running which was a fucking that was our workout yesterday just walking through waist deep snow and then shoveling it and, and making this all for the kids but then we're sitting there chilling and I mean it's just absolutely beautiful you don't see another person in sight anywhere it's completely uh, desolate out here. But I didn't have, yeah. I said, the only thing I was missing was a joint to smoke and totally left up here. 
So this is gonna. This is my unscheduled opportunity. My unscheduled break from marijuana it just happened. And I didn't mean for it to happen. So well, you might you might want to stick to edibles and keep your lungs healthy there, Adam. Yeah, I know yeah. you. You were telling me that like a week or two ago, but uh, I don't know if it's gonna take me. It's gonna take me, man. You know, yeah. I think. I think. It, You're I think so dangerous. Just yeah, right. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> He's on the wild side, yeah, right? Well, we definitely oh, been getting caught up on our movies. I fi- I got Adam to uh, order the Star Wars, the the latest one that came out, and we didn't even make it all the way through uh so we were kind of talking about that that kind of sparked conversation about you know how well the franchise was actually doing and you know all the numbers with george lucas uh because basically sold the entire franchise for like 4.1 billion i guess his net worth now is like 6.5 and it looks like like the the pivot now with uh, with Disney is to focus all on the the streaming service. So Mandalorian crushed, and they're all of the latest like Star Wars have actually taken a hit. Especially the last one, uh, like got really low box office numbers. So they're kind of scrambling to to kind of readjust and and make it all like uh, more focused on just the TV version of Star Wars. Well, you have to tell Sal what this 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 started what it was was a high conversation last night. Justin gave yeah. passed out edibles and we the reason why we didn't <laughs> so you're finish not completely off. We, we didn't finish what just uh, completely lied back uh, 2 seconds ago. Well, smoking, you know, it's different, right? Okay. So we're sitting there and we're watching uh the the new Star Wars and you know Justin, being the the Star Wars nerd that he is, is always like filling me in yes. on like the backstory of you know this you know this was J.J. Abrams' decision to do this, and oh he worked together, with him, <laughs> you know all the all the stuff that you have to be a total. Geek Everybody's to know. getting really annoyed. Yeah. And then I go, you know, if 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 he did this, why why did he give up all the rights? And of course, you know, he got paid four billion dollars, and so it started this big debate or discussion between the three of us about, you know, at what point do you sell out something that's your baby like that? Right. And like, how much, uh, how much do you have to be worth already to say no to a billion dollars? And I, I, so we were all speculating. Like, I said, if he was only a hundred millionaire before, that getting four billion dollars is still life changing for that person. But if you're already a billionaire, accepting four million to give away your kid, right? Would you do it? Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 No, no. I, it, it would have to be an exorbitant amount, I think, especially for something like that. But, I think I think streaming is uh, it, it's got to be blowing up right now. I mean, Netflix has got to be crushing too because I I'm over here watching oh, yeah. the stupidest shit ever. Have you guys watched Love Is Blind on Netflix? <laughs> Did you see the meme? Oh, tell me, on, you, tell me, tell me. I see. I've, I've watched it. Admittedly, right? So have you? Tell me you've watched the or seen the meme going around for it? No, I didn't. Okay, okay so have you watched all of it or how far are you into it? Yeah, dude, I watched the whole damn thing. Wow. Okay, I had nothing better to do. Okay, so you you know the um. Uh, what she's Brazilian, right? The Brazilian girl, blonde. Yeah, the, the cute, crazy girl. Yeah, yeah, the crazy. Okay, so she goes crazy in the in the kitchen and freaking out on him on on yeah. that rant. And he's just like sitting in the bed, like listening to her. So there's a meme going around, or it's like a it's like a I don't know if you call it a meme because it's actually a video clip of somebody, but they split it like a meme showing her. And it's showing like uh, girls that have memorized that whole scene, and they're and they're reenacting it oh, to their I boyfriends. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like right. practicing that line. It's how bad it's. To... Yeah, it's how bad it's gone. <laughs> we're, we're, we're fucking. Yeah, we're reenacting Love Is Blind. Fucking. What scenes. a trivialized show, right? Like, yeah. they're, like they're just. Oh, we're just gonna get married. I have no idea who you are, but that's the end goal, right? Yeah. And, like, and then they so treat like easy once we're married. Yeah, and then they, and then while they're doing it, they're like, "This is the biggest decision of my life." I'm like, "Then why are you on a show?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. To pick who's gonna, be- yeah. But I'll tell you what, you know, because I've been at home watching just garbage. Uh, I still uh, refuse to watch uh, Westworld. So I'm not gonna watch. I, I that. don't know what's wrong with you, <laughs> like Sal, dude. I, like, if I have any intervention, I'm gonna have it about this. Like, because <laughs> you guys, I'm so upset you guys with you. Me so hard. <laughs> I <know. laughs> Come on, man. Like, dude. Every time you we go traveling, close. yeah, I know, right? Yeah, That's, we we should have learned from that a long time ago. Well, that. we gave up. I think it just reunited this conversation because we watched the third one again, and I th- we were watching it. You know, going, <sighs> why does sound not like Dude, this? Dude, it's just so <laughs> so like you can't be a, you can't be a science nerd and not uh, like it. It's just know? got so many layers to it. I just like when they take that much time to really string all these different uh, stories together and make it like super epic. So, hey, hey, I know, I know, I know that I know that Doug doesn't like uh, when we get too political on this show, but I feel like 
it's a must. We have to talk about. What's- Feel like fuck Doug is what you're saying. Well, yeah, no, basically. I just, I just, I like, <laughs> I know you're sitting around watching it as much as we're watching right now, and there's, and I know we all have both uh, hardcore conservative, liberal friends down the middle, libertarian friends. Uh, we, uh, I think that uh, you're probably getting as much as I'm getting between everyone like that. What is your take? on uh, how Trump is going to navigate through this, and do you think it's possible that he still gets reelected? Do you think he still wins out of this? Yeah, the, the odds that a president gets, uh, that, a, that a, you know, a current president gets unseated during a national emergency is extremely low. That's almost never happens. If you guys remember uh, September 11th, um, oh, yeah, you know, before that, that, Bush had terrible approval ratings uh but now, nobody liked them now but the argument the argument to that and I, that i've heard already that I, i'm going to challenge you on is that people say that that's because the reason why his approval went right because he did something right everybody wanted us everybody wanted us to rally and say fuck you and come after him and that was kind of his response and that's what won over everybody what i feel like what's happening right now with trump is is his approval rating really going up is this is this i feel like more people are talking shit about how he handled it and is it too early to tell yeah, no, I don't think it's because when, when in, in times of uncertainty, you, you don't want more uncertainty. You don't want to try anything new. You want to stay with what you have. It's human psychology. And anytime you go throughout all of history, anytime there's a crazy national you know, emergency, unless it was caused by the president that was uh, in charge, um, they don't want nobody wants to get rid of them. And then here's the deal. Uh, it, it, Trump consistently gets rated highly when it comes to the economy. And with the economy now likely going to be going into recession, um, good luck trying to get him unseated. He's already talked about giving. Did you guys hear about? It? He said that uh, they're, they're talking about giving Americans like a thousand dollars a like month. A check, uh, yeah, in the mail. Or yeah, for 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 what's going on right I ju- now. I actually so. just read that. I, I that's confirmed, isn't it? I I, I thought I, I thought what I read said that it's definitely happening. Something like that. I know they're going to they're going to be pumping trillions of dollars uh, in, in, into the economy to try and keep it from from crashing. I, yeah, I don't see I don't see him getting unseated right now with all this 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 uncertainty with all this fear. But who knows, dude? Because the elections later on this year, um, who knows what it's going to look like? Uh, but right now, it's just it's a lot of like fear. It's a lot of you know let's let's all do the stuff just in case, or let's prevent you know scary things from happening. I, don't, I mean, who knows? Well, you got, but, uh, you got uh, airlines and restaurants and casino, casinos that are pleading for bailouts right now, uh, similar to how yeah. banks were pleading for it back in 08. Uh, you know, that what what gets me worried is that if all these these massive mega, uh, you know, industries end up needing bailout, I can't see us not falling into a recession, at, oh, least, well, at yeah, least not a mini one, if not a big one. Yeah, and who's and who's giving the money to them? That's it comes, it's from us, right? Right. That's it, what I'm saying. I think it's funny that casinos want to bail. Them. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's ridiculous. <laughs> we, please help us. We need help we us need to stay in steal business. Steal more money. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, there's, I'm sure there's a lot of pissed off people. Like, screw you. <laughs> You guys oh, yeah. have taken enough of my money already. Yeah, I did hear on on a positive note in, in regards to like the thing we were talking about with toilet paper and grocery stores that th- that was just the in, initial wave of of most of us Americans being idiots, and the grocery stores are already catching back up. And uh, I, I hear that that's going to be all restocked. And most of these people that went and bought shit for the next fucking nine months aren't going to need to go to the grocery store for the next month or two. So it'll be everyone everyone that is kind yeah. of panicking. If you went there like we did the other day, and, so, and all we had was yeah, like you're two. the toilet paper king, we yeah. get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah good job. <laughs> yeah, I know. No, my mother in law said that. She said that uh, it's every day. It's less and less mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. busy. They're getting a lot of phone calls still. She said, but she said people are starting to calm down. You can't find certain medicines. Like you go try and find uh, like Tylenol or ibuprofen, and it's gone. Like what are people doing? They're buying like 15 bottles. I know. Oh my god, probably. <laughs> It's so yeah. weird seeing what people are doing out there is crazy. But what's it's weird? Really- what, what's weird to me though is like we don't have a shortage of any of that. Like I know, and, and that's that's all stuff that uh, that you normally could get delivered. I mean, I don't. Yeah, I, I, it doesn't make sense to me why the, the I don't know. But I mean, obviously, when something like this happens, yeah. a lot of people don't act very rational. In there were yeah, I guess if, if this strings out and like nobody's getting paid, and it's like at some point, like how do they pay for their food and all that kind yeah. of stuff? But well, I'm it, it's I'm getting a lot right of. Now. 
and I'm, I'm getting a lot of uh, DMs from uh, people who are, you know, doing these, uh, doing their workouts at home and, and finding new ways of training their body. I had one girl uh, DM me and she said that, you know, she's like, well, I've been working out at home now for the last week because, uh, you know, my gym closed. And she's like, and, and I'm, uh, she's like, my appetite is up. Why, why am I hungrier? And I'm like, it sounds like you needed the change in your body's trying to build muscle. I'm getting a lot of messages like that where people are mm. actually noticing improvements right. in their physique because they were forced, you know, it's like, so, you know how it is. You get stuck in your routine so much because you go to the gym all the time. Yeah. But now that you're forced, you have to improvise. But that, imp that improvisation gave you the, the novelty and the change that your body needed. Well, you I've been seeing a lot of that. You remember when we, uh, Justin and I were just actually speculating about this, right? Yeah. So we, uh, uh, a maps anywhere has been like our redheaded stepchild forever. I mean, it's been one of those programs that we were, when we finished it, we were most proud of and thought, uh, the, 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 the thought that we put into that program, uh, reminds me of kind of like prime. There's just, it's got so many different, uh, elements to it that we thought through that is so unique to an at home program, especially for somebody who actually still wants to build and ch literally change it. It's not like a maintain or, Oh, if it's just for people that are, are scared to lift heavy weights. No, it's like, we, we remember we made it in three different levels to intensify it. And, you know, we had when we first launched it, we had a you know a, a smaller wave of people came through than we are having come through right now, and the response that we got was incredible. It was just that not a lot of people jumped on it because they didn't feel like they wanted to or they needed to or it wasn't the program for them. Mm -hmm. Now what I'm seeing is people going through it, and we're starting to get those responses from that small uh, community that we originally had when we launched it. So it's pretty cool to see that because I think that program for a long time uh just it didn't get enough love no definitely yeah. not yeah but it's cool to see yeah. it spread but you remember right when now. we wrote it right i remember yeah. when we wrote it i remember all the obviously every time we wrote a program we've always been proud of what we've created but maps anywhere was up there with the way we felt about uh, uh maps prime just as far as the uh created creativity and thought for all levels of fitness that would be potentially wanting to work at home with no equipment. Yeah, we tried we to ninja that. corrective exercises in there and ways to address postural issues, all kinds of oh, things. Isom and, that's uh, isometrics in it. It's yeah, kind of, I mean, we just weaved it all in that program. We put yeah. a lot of thought in that program, so it's cool to see people using it right now. Yeah, and then there are a lot of people who have uh, like your basic setup home gym, like barbell, dumbbell, adjustable bench, and you know maybe a place to do squats or whatever. If you got that, you could pretty much do anything you don't even you, you could do any of our almost any of our maps yeah. programs uh you, you know whether it's power lift or anabolic you can strong. even do aesthetic yeah and split strong you just have to modify some of the exercises uh you're pretty set there's a few techniques you could do too if you want to like if you're used to working out with like a million and one different machines or whatever but now you're at home and you just have your barbell and your you know your dumbbells or whatever there's a few things you could do to to change things up that doesn't require you to try a million different exercises. One thing, and I was thinking about this this morning, uh, a combination that oftentimes uh, doesn't get done is uh, heavy weight with short rest periods. A lot of people, mm -hmm. we never think to do heavy weight with short rest. It's always heavy weight, long rest periods. But I've actually done this in the past where I've taken uh, a heavy, uh, you know, like a heavy squat or a deadlift um, and I'll do like one or two reps and I'll rest 30 seconds and then I'll do another one or two reps, and then I'll rest 30 seconds. I'll do another one. It's a very different feeling. Um, so if you're, you know, if you're listening and you have your, you know, basic, uh, you know, gym set up with weights, that's one way you could try working out. Almost no one ever, uh, almost never talks about doing heavy weights with short rest periods because, and that's not the standard protocol, mm -hmm. but in terms of novelty, uh, there's definitely some value. I've no, some no, great, you, great take like a, you take like a, you take like an 80%, you know, 75, 80% of your max, you know, I love doing this with deadlift and it, it's a, it's a similar feel as a, like cluster setting. You know, I just, yes. it's a cool way to work out where you set the weight up like that with about 80% of what you can handle load. And then you just do singles with, you know, 30 second to 45 second rest periods in, in between. It's great. Did you see, yeah. uh, to remember, uh, you know, back when you talked about the all day workout and like you're yeah. experimenting with that. I've had a lot of messages of people are like, well, you know, I'm pretty much confined to my house and uh, I want to experiment with this and give it a try. And so like just revisiting that episode and I was directing people to that, uh, how you did that and stuff and spread it out throughout your day. It's like just a kind of a cool, fun thing to do. If you, you're more of an advanced lifter, dude, if you're stuck at home, uh, I, I tell you what, instead of doing a, 
one hour workout once a day uh, right now while you're stuck at home. Take your one hour workout and divide it up and do three 20 minute workouts and split them up and watch what happens. It's uh, it's it's remarkable. Splitting up a workout like that can really produce uh, some pretty significant results. And if you're at home anyway, instead of watching things like Love is Blind, <laughs> uh <laughs> Try, you know, try working out uh, throughout the day that way, um, and the, the results are pretty. I, I, I did that like you, like you said, Justin. I did that with uh, with free weights, but you could do that with body weight exercises too. Mm-hmm. Where instead of doing it all at once, you know, do it at a.m., p.m. and and here's the other thing too. Uh, and this is for 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 mental uh, for mental health. When you when you listen to experts talk about how you uh, you know to best survive a stressful situation, they'll always tell you to break up uh, the day into chunks. So, you know, if if you're stuck at home for a week, then you want to break it down day by day. And then you want to break it down. Okay. I'm going to get to lunch. Okay. I'm going to get to dinner. And the, one of the great ways to do that, especially if you're a fitness fanatic is you wake up in the morning, you do a 20 minute workout. Okay. uh, My next 20 minute workout is at noon. So I'm just going to get, you know, just going to do stuff and, wait until then. And then, Oh, here's my 20 minute workout. And then, okay, I got my next one at six o'clock tonight and it breaks up your day and it, 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 it should help with the, the, the stress of, you know, isolation of, you know, being stuck at home. So no, I plan, I plan to do that while we're up here. I think it's perfect. Cause, uh, we have it. Have you, did you see, by the way, did you see, uh, Justin's platform coming together? Dude. I'm so angry right now. I swear to God, <laughs> you guys are up there. I have to reinforce and- it for all your crazy deads, bro. Oh, it's it's gorgeous. It's uh that gym we have set up in there looks uh, looks amazing. I'm, I can't wait to go up there and and and, and try it out. No. Have you guys seen that? Uh, heard of the conspiracy theories around the coronavirus? By the way. Oh my God! It's, it's, enlighten us. I've heard some. I want to hear what you're hearing. Well, that it's man made for one, right? Yeah. So there's a there, that's the big one, right? Because there's a there's this uh, laboratory in in Wuhan uh, where the you know where the virus came out of that apparently they study viruses and they've got, you know, like 1500 viruses there that they, whatever. And people are saying, Oh, it was created by, you know, by, by Chinese scientists or it was a man-made or whatever. Well, anyway, they actually studied the virus and um, uh, there was a, I I can't remember who did it, but it was a a company that actually took took the virus, studied it and they uh, analyzed it. And uh, so let me read it to you. It says here, uh, they analyzed the public genome sequence data from the the coronavirus, the one that we're talking about right now, SARS-CoV-2, and they found no evidence that the virus was man-made in a laboratory. So they said they confirmed it was natural. Yeah, I don't don't know what to believe. I thought I – did you see the – if you haven't seen this, you should watch it. I thought it was interesting. Um, One of our – Listeners and people in the forum shared a uh, a video. It was a a link to a YouTube link. I'll sh- I'll have Jackie share it in the the show notes. Uh, but it was on our forum. If you haven't watched it, you should watch it. According to that video, th- th- it came from pigs. And according to that video, th- and it's live. It's a uh, it's clips of um, them discussing and talking about it four months ago. Uh, so it's really, pretty, yeah, no, it's wild. You should listen to it. Yes. Yeah, I thought it was from in, bats. Exactly. That's the bats. And then there was an aardvark type creature that they said that they had tested that had the coronavirus in around Wuhan in that uh, wet market area. So I don't know, man. I don't know what to believe. You know, what's weird is that, um, isn't it say, doesn't it say in the Bible to avoid, uh, eating pigs? Am yeah. I, am I tripping? No, uh, I don't know. I don't know if it says that you avoid eating pigs. Like to, to avoid, I think, eat- I think uh, pork has been. Uh, it's, I know some religions don't eat pork. I don't, yeah, I, yeah don't- I know that, uh, but it's weird. Because, and I know they carry a lot of disease, and I'm wondering if that's why it's in so many religions. Right. Um, because we had the swine flu, you know, H1N1 swine flu killed a lot of people worldwide, infected millions of people. That was a nasty one. Um, and geez, if the, if this virus came from pigs too, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, then, but then we had what? The other one came from birds, right? Mm hmm. Oh, that's true. Yeah, so we, we had the bovine one. Right? Yes, yeah. Yeah. right. The mad cow. Oh, that kills. Well, that kills my conspiracy. Thanks, yeah. guys. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. dude. Yeah, yeah. Because I. Like- hey, so be honest. What was uh? What was? What did it feel like listening to the podcast yesterday without yourself on it? <laughs> was it all? Did, did you, you want to punch your? Did it your feel phone? awful or what? It was hard for me to listen to. Yeah. It was no, no, awkward. no. I, 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 you know what? I, I, it was actually a little emotional for me because uh, I haven't missed an episode with you guys. 
since early early days there's only one other episode yeah that i that i wasn't uh on and that was way back and i don't know what episode number that was but it was before 100 um so but uh, i also felt uh, a, a tremendous uh sense of gratitude for you guys to be able to do that um and and, and keep things running you know um you know mind pump's not going to slow down i know a lot of people uh, look forward to listening to us and we have a responsibility right now to to help entertain people take people's minds off of you know the the seriousness of uh, of things and inform people on fitness and health and um so i you know i was i was uh and plus i'm sick you know when you're sick you get a little emotional and weird so <laughs> <laughs> yeah go read the reviews that always helps yeah yeah it was it, yeah oh yeah that always makes me feel better right go back and read the old itunes review it was very interesting feeling because you're right it has early on we we tried this out like really really early on in the first like i don't know it was like i want to say the first 100 episodes when we each were gone one time and that was different and weird back then. It was really weird now. You forget, and for me, it reminds me of, uh, you know, playing sports with a, a with somebody you grew up playing with uh, for years. And uh, and then all of a sudden having to either play uh, without them or with different players on the team. That's what it felt like. It felt, yeah, it felt timing, different. rhythm, you know, just it, it is totally different when you don't have the full team there for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I really appreciate you guys for, for holding it down it was uh like i haven't been knocked down like this in a a long time and um you know and again just to do the right thing it's, it's I, I don't want to be around i mean you got a baby at home yeah adam and, and justin you have two little ones and you know doug's really kind of this kind of so. uh <laughs> rachel's pretty pissed too right now this is gonna fuck her uh, ambassador health t-shirt launch that she was doing so oh yeah. hey, listen, i don't think it's gonna, i don't think hey, i don't think hey, it's gonna sell anything you're taking right on the diseases of the world that's how i'm spinning it <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know what i mean hey, yeah. listen ambassador of health doesn't mean i'm immune <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the bounce back right i know but although although maybe it will serve us if we find out you did have the coronavirus and you survived maybe Maybe t-shirt yeah. sales would do well. Yeah. Then you so guys. Sal, can, Sal's got the antibodies. Yeah. I'm going to start extracting. I was just going to say you could yeah. you could harvest my antibodies. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure <laughs> out how we could spin this and actually do actually that. come up out of this situation. I survive so we can continue to pay our team and keep going here. So hopefully, uh, it's, hopefully, it's, make it out. It is weird though. Right now, there's like so many people who have the same thing that I had. I, like I, again, it's here's the, the truth. The odd, the high odds are that if you're sick uh you probably don't have the coronavirus it's far more likely that you have another virus because there's you know right now there's millions of people in america with really bad cold viruses there's way more people with the flu so and i'm not saying this to make people you know not go to the doctor if they have symptoms i'm just saying like the paranoia and fear can really fuck with you you know what i mean like totally yeah you because know, because the odds are i was probably exposed to a cold or the flu and that's that's what I ended up getting. And you know, the, even the doctor I went to, you know, said the same thing. And is like, no, you're you're, the odds are you don't have that. You, you know, I didn't travel internationally. I you know I didn't do anything like that. I mean, aside from the bat soup that I had the other day, there's no, nothing else. That. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Sal. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's important. We got to keep ourselves sane because uh, it's this is a this is a weird time, man. And if we we sit around and freak out, we're gonna hurt ourselves. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Today's Quaw is brought to you by Maps Anabolic. If you're looking to maximize your overall muscle and strength, Maps Anabolic is the perfect place to start. With a full 30-day money-back guarantee, there is absolutely zero risk. So what are you waiting for? Go to mindpumpmedia.com and get started today. It's the motherfucking Quaw. The eagle has landed. Quaw. All right, our first question is from Susan DeMarco. Is the gallon of water a day a real thing or just a myth? Uh, you, you know what? This is this is one of those ones. Uh, remember when we talked the other day and we, we kind of went on a rant about uh, like old just kind of wisdom or good advice that, that you know, the, the science nerds come out to dispel and talk shit about? This is, a, yeah. this is one of those examples for me also. It's like... Uh, I think one of the best pieces of advice that I, I gave to clients uh, was just the generic prescription of, you know, try and get about a gallon of water every day. Uh, and, yeah. the, and the truth is, uh, no, most people don't quite need that much. 
and you know the, the exact uh, ratio per pound of body weight and muscle and how you exercise varies per person and you know yeah. we can go down the rabbit hole of unpacking uh, how uh, how overstated that that statement can be but what i have found from training clients for so many years is a majority of people just don't drink enough water they drink sodas and other forms of liquid and just could the the advice of getting them to drink more water i think is overall in general very good advice yeah i think that was the main thing is that we all recognized how little our clients like would consume water and how dehydration was uh, pretty much a, a common occurrence uh, for a lot of people because uh, they would I mean, even in their workouts, if they're profusely sweating or, you know, and they're not rehydrating and, and they're not really planning ahead of time with their hydration, uh, you know, can definitely get away from it. And even ourselves. Have you guys yeah, ever, definitely. I mean, have you, do you remember the first time that you were like, oh, let me track my water, you know, because that's another one of those areas I think that everybody thinks they get plenty of. Well, and, I remember when you were going yeah. through your first, comp like competing in your first show, that was the main thing, like point you, you brought up. I was like, I can't believe how much water I can consume and yeah. should be consuming. It just goes right through and yeah. it, right to my cells. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's general advice, right? It's yeah. not specific because if you get real specific, of course, it's going to be different from person to person. And some people, it's actually dangerous to recommend right. uh, that much water, right? Pe some people with certain kidney issues and heart issues, uh, they might, they, they might drinking too much water might actually cause problems. But for most people, the reason why you'll hear that piece of advice is because if you are drinking a gallon of water a day, you're not drinking soda, you're not drinking juice, you're probably not eating as much because what tends to happen uh, is that we sometimes we eat out of uh, compulsion and instead of eating out of compulsion, now we're drinking. Mm -hmm. Also, dehydration or lack of water can cause us to want to eat more. Um, here's some of the effects that I've noticed from drinking, uh, you know, making sure that clients drink a lot of water. One of the biggest ones is skin people notice improvements in their skin, especially mm -hmm. my female clients. They'll, they'll tell the day after yeah, they and start joint drinking pain. that much water. Yeah. I've joint pain. Lot. Yeah. Joint pain is another one. Um, I mean, one of the ways that you could, you could kind of gauge your own water intake. If you want to be a little bit more specific is by the, the color of your urine, uh, a light yellow, um, is, is, is what you're aiming for. If it's clear, like if it's like, it's like you yeah, yeah. If you're peeing water, then if it's clear like water, then you're probably drinking too much. And if it's really dark yellow or really, really strong yellow, um, then you're not drinking enough. So you want it to be kind of a light yellow. But I think this is this is general good advice. It's just you can definitely pick it apart, you know, uh, when you when you go down to the specifics. But I have in my experience, I think like you, Adam, I've only ever had positive uh, positive uh, reactions from clients who I've encouraged to drink this much water. Because what, what they end up doing is they'll get their gallon of water or whatever, and they'll put it in one container, and then they'll monitor it throughout the day. So they'll take it mm -hmm. with them throughout the day. And it just it structures things. It puts things in good structure. And, and people who end up doing that, uh, my clients who do that, almost every single one of them comes back and says, besides uh, you know the fact that they go pee, yeah, pee more, more often, often. Right. Yeah. Which, hey, here's the side effect of that. Your steps go up. Well, you know, that, that, so <laughs> well, we, we, yeah. we speak to behavior all the time. And, and I think that that's, this is another one of those areas where I see positive behavioral changes when I tell people that advice too. It's not just the science that supports, oh, uh, we should be drinking more water for dehydration. Forget all that. Just it creates good habits and behavior for a lot of clients that I've told hey, target a gallon. And I don't know if that's because it is. They're so focused on trying to get their gallon, their mind's not thinking about going over and grabbing snacks. Or I don't know if it's because they're drinking more water than they ever drank before and now they're peeing every 30 minutes to an hour or two. I mean, it's probably a combination of all those things. But at the end of the day, I think it's generally good advice and I can't stand when I see the, the science community that tries to shit on tips like that because it reminds me again of the, you know, hey, when people used to say, don't eat past 6 or 7 p.m., and then right. we, we come out and we argue the science because we know that, you know, if you eat a 1,000 calories uh, spread out through the day or uh, all, all beyond 7 or before 7, it's not any different for us uh, from your metabolism. But as far as 
good habits, it is a big difference because the people tend to make bad choices after 7 p.m. at night. And same thing, if you're not focused on drinking that gallon of water all day long, you tend to make other choices besides drinking the water. What a great, what a phenomenal example you just gave, Adam. That's such a great example because it's 100% true, right? Like, you know, don't eat after 7 p.m., not because food magically turns into body fat after 7 p.m., but because after 7 p.m., you tend to eat foods that are, you know, bad choices. And if you're drinking a gallon of water every day, you're probably, this is the big one for me, you're probably not drinking other stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I've actually had, I can't tell you how many or clients I've crap. had who, yeah, I can't tell you how many clients I've had who've who've uh, uh, told me that they didn't like the taste of water. I used to, the first time I heard that, I remember it was like, a, I was like, a, <laughs> have you guys heard that? I've yeah, heard that I have before. heard that too. Yeah, yeah. Like they have to have oh, flavor. It's, yeah. Oh, it's crazy. I, I remember the first time I heard it. I think it was like a year into personal training and it blew my mind. And then I kept hearing it. People were like, well, I, 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 water taste, it doesn't taste good. I need to have something in it. And then I realized most people drink, you know, half of their fluids come from something that has flavor, whether it's a soda, a tea, uh, you know, a juice, crystal light yeah. juice, something like that. So if you're drinking a gallon of just water, you're eliminating that. And that's a, that's a behavioral change. So a hundred percent, I agree with you, Adam. I don't think sure if we break down the science, uh, it, probably not, but if you, if you follow, if you were to take a group of people, let me put it this way. If you were to take, you know, a hundred people and divide them into two and one side, we don't tell them to drink a gallon of water a day. And the other side we do, um, at the end of that, you're going to find just better behaviors with the group that drinks Agreed. the gallon of water because Agreed. it encourages that. So, um, that's really what it all boils down to. So, you know, do you necessarily need a gallon of water every single day? No, probably not. You know, some, some people need far less, some people need more. Uh, but at the end of the day, when you promote that, and encourage that and do that yourself, um, it's an easy way to to positively influence your behaviors, which will influence your body fat percentage and your health um, in the long term. Right. Next question is from Maritza3212. Are kipping pull-ups a good substitute if I can only do one or two strict pull-ups? Do they have <laughs> Who picked this value? question? Picked this you question. picked this question? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. You know why? Uh, there was actually like a recent uh, interview, an article with Greg Glassman actually like renouncing. Like if he had to go back and sort of create, recreate uh, CrossFit, he would have eliminated the kipping pull-up. But I mean, his argument for it was kind of weak. It was like... He was saying that it would naturally occur after you get really good at, at pull-ups and you're trying to do more of them. You'd naturally kind of get this sort of kipping um, momentum uh, as you went to keep going, uh, trying to get more reps. But uh, for the most part, I mean, it's been proven. It's very harsh in shearing. The shearing forces alone uh, that you're putting on your shoulder is really very damaging. Yeah. It, okay. So I can't even believe people still do these. So I know. kipping pull-ups have – value for gymnasts that's it. uh yeah gymnasts need to learn how to do this and so it's not the exercise itself if it's done with perfect form good stability good control just like any other exercise yeah. is probably safe but here's the thing a kipping pull-up requires more skill to do safely than a regular pull-up does yeah. so it makes zero sense that you would teach a kipping pull-up to somebody who can't do 10 really good strict pull-ups it makes no sense you need to have the strength and the stability to be able to do regular pull-ups first. Then you need to have good shoulder mobility. You have to have good technique. You have to have all those prerequisites before you mess around with the this ballistic swinging style pull-up that you know CrossFit popularized for some reason. Yeah. Um, other than that, it has no value. It has zero value, <laughs> and it's not a great way to get better at pull-ups. No, there's there's I can list five other better ways. Here, let's try this. If well, you can I, only do- I was just thinking about this. You know what, Doug? Just to take this. To, I don't know why. I don't think we've actually done this. I think maybe because we think it's so basic. But if we get questions like this still, it's something we should address on the YouTube channel. And because uh, I think one of the best things that you can do with someone who can't do a full pull-up, uh, I was just helping a client with this the other day, is you just take a band and wrap it around the pull-up bar and then, you know, put your knee, one of your knees in it. 
and That's it. and whatever whatever uh, however difficult uh, yeah. you know five pull ups is for you would be you would base that off of how much how strength how much uh, uh, strength or how strong of a rubber band you use to assist you. Well, you can even do an like totally simulate a uh, you know one of those gravitron versions where you could you could take the band and then string it across where you know the hooks are for for the bar and so that way too you could stand on top of it right. and get yeah. that assisted help so there's other ways to do it to be able to kind of get you to to uh you know grade up to that where you could do it without any sort of assist but yes that's yeah. that's how I that's how I like to have people do it I'll have I'll hook the band like where the where the the hooks are for the barbell. I've actually so never done just, that, but that's a good idea. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's a, it's it's an easier way to do it if if they have those available. Um, if you're looking for good bands, by the way, Rubber Bandits, uh, one of the best brands of bands that we've we've I see, and we have them available on our website yeah. uh, too. Very high quality bands. So that's one of the best ways to do it. Here's another thing you could do: you could practice uh, body rows. Um, right. and uh, so b body rows are where you pull your body to the bar, except you're kind of laying underneath it. So you're more horizontal. Um, and then finally, uh, this is an easy practice. It's one of the most effective ways I've ever had somebody improve their strength at doing pull-ups. If you can only do one or two pull-ups, do one pull-up, you know, four or five times a day, uh, you know, every day, right. every day, you know, walk by a pull-up bar, do one pull-up and then, you know, do it again in a couple hours. And that constant frequency, well, first off, instead of just doing one pull-up, now you're doing four or five. You're just spreading it out throughout the, throughout the day. But the strength gains that come from doing that are uh, incredible. Oh, you, you noticed it in a couple weeks. Yeah. If, you, if oh. you stay true to that and you actually make the effort to do five single pull-ups, if you can only do one pull-up, let's say, and you make the effort to do five single pull-ups every single day. In two weeks, you'll see a huge improvement. Huge. Oh, huge! Yeah. You should get. You should get. A, 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 on average, I've seen clients add two or three pull-ups uh, to their strength within a couple of weeks from doing that. And then look, considering the circumstances, um, the current circumstances, yeah, perfect for that. Yeah, yeah. You got a pull-up bar you could put in your doorway, and you're you're at home. You're not doing shit anyway. Uh, <laughs> walk by the pull-up bar, do one pull-up. And then go about your day, and then maybe an hour or two later, do it again. You know, do that three or four times, and watch what happens. But a kipping pull up, <laughs> terrible. No, terrible, terrible way to do Just it. Just yeah, seeing that it, question, I was like, oh, we need to bring this up. I need to evangelize and save all the remaining CrossFitters out there. <laughs> yeah. Next question is from Taylor Kinkle. What are your thoughts on combining a therapy practice with personal training? So are are they now? I'm, I'm assuming, assuming they're referring yeah, yeah. to. Like therapy, therapy, like talk therapy. Yeah. Oh, talk therapy or physical therapy? No, no, no. It, more, I, I, like, like uh, mental therapy. So are they? Are oh. they actually a therapist? I think so. I mean, if you're a th if you're actually a, a, a therapist, I think that's a, well. Let's be honest. We we've talked about this. At Nazi, I think it's a great combo. I think the majority of our job is that. Yeah. Oh, you know, I mean, it's huge. I, I I would be. A, that's such a uh, gosh. If you if you had a studio or a gym. And uh, you were a personal trainer. Here's this. If you're a trainer, uh, one of the most effective things you could do to make yourself uh, just really, really good at your job is to have people that you're connected to that can uh, that can augment what you do. So, for example, uh, you know, you'd have like a chiropractor, uh, a massage therapist, you know, friends, people that you trust. Right. Uh, people that do a good job. And another person would be a therapist. Um, you know, 80 percent of of someone's fitness success is mental and psychological, especially when it comes to nutrition. When it comes mm -hmm. to nutrition, uh, I mean, it's it's almost all, you know, psychological. So, and I've done this before. I've worked with clients who've worked with therapists. And then what I do with the therapist is I then work with the therapist. So, so I'll give you a great example of how, uh, how this provided me with a lot of value. So I had one client, it's a great example. I had one client who, you know, she had a lot of body image issues and so we're working out in the gym and she went and sought out uh, help from a therapist. This was the first time I'd ever worked with a therapist with a client. And anytime one of my clients would see someone else, uh, if they informed me of it, because she told me this, I, I said, you know, I would always ask if I could contact them so that I could talk to them about, you know, what would be appropriate and inappropriate in terms of my training. So I wanted to make sure that we work together rather than against each other. So I called this therapist. And I said, hey, I'm working with so-and-so. I'm her trainer. Um, and uh, she let me know that she's working with you. Um, is there anything that you you think I should look out for or whatever? And she said, yeah. She said, 
um, you know, don't refer to sculpting or shaping the body or anything that has to do with how her body looks. Um, if you could just, just focus on function, um, that would be great because a uh, real strong trigger for her is, you know, getting approval for how she looks. So, and it was, and it was so phenomenal. It was great to work with the therapist. So then mm -hmm. I could change how I communicated fitness mm -hmm. to this client and it became so effective. So, Gosh, if you could combine the two, that was that's such a uh, I, can, I almost can't think of a better combination. Yeah, to be quite honest. I mean, I even had an example of just I had somebody that was morbidly obese that had a therapist in conjunction with training with me. And it was so nice to work with uh, because it, it was it was it was addressing a lot of like the root issues of what really, you know, the the hab habits and behaviors that were resulting in that direction that I could then avoid like like certain things like that like you mentioned triggers and things to then work with them with their nutrition but also like more keep them uh coming back to the gym and and, and keep like slowly kind of progressing them appropriately well i yeah i attribute uh i attribute most of my early success as a trainer to to this side uh i think that and i didn't i don't know this is me looking back now but i mean i was in Lots of counseling growing up uh, with the, the childhood that I had. So we had a ton of therapy and counseling one-on-one, uh, -on -one, both family. And I think a lot of the skills on uh, communicating that I learned from the therapist talking to me or talking to my parents or talking to my, me and my siblings uh, are the tools that I had when I first started. Because I wasn't a great trainer. I didn't have a ton of national certifications. I didn't have a lot of experience. Um, I didn't finish my Kines degree, so I didn't. I, I don't think by any means uh, was I was that my strength or what carried uh, a lot of my success. For sure, it was uh, my ability to communicate and help people on on the the therapeutic side more than I think the actual uh, you know fitness and uh, nutrition side. So. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't. Th I think without it, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. And so, like you said, so I don't think I could think of a a better practice to potentially partner with to accelerate your your fitness training growth. Well, well, I'll tell you what. Um, if you look at uh, if you were to examine a trainer and and uh, you know through the years, obviously as they become more experienced, they become you know better and better and better at, at helping people achieve uh, permanent success. Now, where is that coming from? Is it because the trainer is learning a ton more about exercise or is it because the trainer is learning a ton more about the, their ability to communicate mm -hmm. the, this side of it? You know, now, now if you're a trainer, of course, stay in your lane. I'm not saying you're a therapist, but it's the, it's your ability to communicate with your client, uh, which is, you know, more on this side than it is on the personal training side. I mean, I would say 10 years later as a trainer, I definitely knew more about exercise, but my, most of my, that more the value that I was bringing 10 years later, a lot of it came from the experience of how to communicate to my clients and how to work them through some of these issues. Uh, so therapy, uh, what a great combination with personal training. In fact, when I had my personal training studio, um, uh, that was someone I was constantly looking for to work in my studio. And I never was able to find anybody, unfortunately, who would uh, you know rent space in my studio, but that was always number one. I was like, okay, if I could find a good therapist who specializes in working with, you know, nutrition, eating disorders, body image issues, that kind of stuff. Oh my God, that would be so valuable. So next question is from Kuchina, Carolina. You guys have discussed the importance of mobility work, but what should you do if your lifts are affected by hypermobility? So hypermobility refers to, uh, it's like you're, you're hyper flexible, um, and you lack stability. Okay. So some, someone might read the term hypermobility and think that's a good thing. Like, oh, you're super mobile. No. Okay. So when we use the term mobility, we're referring to your ability to move through a full range of motion with strength, strength control, and stability. Your ability to move through a wide range of motion without strength, control, and you know, uh, stability. Yeah, that's problematic. That, that's like a baby, right? So if you take a baby... Uh, you know, you could, you could, a, a baby can, they can, you know, put their foot next to their head. You could do all kinds of stuff with the baby. They're super, super flexible, but they're not stable. Um, which, which that's why a baby doesn't lift weights. They would hurt themselves. Right. So, uh, so what's, what, how do you, how do you work around that? Okay. Believe it or not, um, you actually have to shorten your range of motion. 
Um, so when I've trained people who, and I, and this is not very common, by the way, it's usually the opposite. Usually when you work with, with most people, they're, they're tight, but I've had a few clients that were hyper mobile. And what you do is, so let's say the average client, I'm trying to push ranges of motion, trying to get better mobility with someone with hyper mobility. I'm having them squat to parallel. I'm having them, you know, shoulder press, stop before full range of motion, hold that tension, slow the reps down. I'm trying to create strength within short ranges of motion. Once they have that strength in that short range of motion, then I lengthen it a little bit and then I build strength there. And then I lengthen it again Mm -hmm. and I build strength there. So I'm, what what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to, to add strength to their full range of motion, but I'm doing it incrementally. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, no, that definitely does. I've had clients too, like were dancers or like a cheerleader who uh, had like real hyper mobility and, um, just getting the control was everything. And so to then really mess and manipulate the tempo uh, was really a helpful a helpful tool to go through like lunges or squats or, you know, anything overhead press, but I'm doing it with a very slow tempo, especially on the eccentric and control. And then also uh, stopping and having them hold isometric I poses. I was just going to say isometrics which, are huge here. That was a big, that was a big part of the, the protocol for the majority of these workouts was a lot of isometric, uh, very specific, uh, you know, angles that I felt like, you know, we're trying to get that, that, that natural strength curve to then respond and then to really gain access to that and, and stabilize the entire body. So also like having, um, you know, that split stance, uh, was something I worked with a lot to, you know, then add load to and be able to hold and sustain positions. Well, I don't know which one of you picked this question, but it definitely, uh, with what we've been talking about with maps anywhere, to me, this is a, an incredible program for a person like this Yeah, because of the, uh, the isometric component, the stability component, the, the laying a good, strong, stable foundation with body weight movement type exercises first. Uh, it's much safer for you to do it there and and build good strength and, and to set you up to then load bars later on. So I think uh, a, a really good place for somebody that has like this crazy dexterity like that or flexibility and mobility, but they they lack the the actual strength through the full range of motion. Uh, Maps anywhere is a phenomenal program for that. Oh, totally. And you, you see, this is more common in, in 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 females. You see this in 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 women more often. And yeah. typically, the way this presents itself is you have a girl who's really flexible and she has a really strong anterior pelvic tilt, um, causes low back pain. And so, you know, they're like, Oh, I got to stretch more. Like don't stretch. That's uh, the, the last thing you want to do is static stretching. What you want to do is get your body into, uh, you know, good positions that feel good and then create tension in them. You know, that's the, that's what we're talking about is creating that tension in each position. So think about connecting through, your ranges of motion by, by flexing the muscle. And here's, here's how, you know, you have hypermobility issues besides the fact that maybe you have some pain, you have trouble connecting. So you'll get into a position and you'll see, I know, like, again, I, I've trained people like this. Well, they'll, they'll do a squat and it's like, they'll, they'll sit in a squat and it's just like their joints are supporting them. They're not their, not their muscle slow, everything way the hell down, you know, tradi- you know, normally we recommend people do, you know, anywhere between three to four seconds on a negative. I'll take somebody with hypermobility and I'll have them do 10, 15 second negative. Like you are going slow. We are going to go light. We're going to connect uh, to this entire range of motion. And then here's the, and then build muscle. Of course, as you build muscle and strength, you'll find uh, that you're going to, fi- you're going to be far more, more stable. Um, you're not going to have as much pain in those areas. And it's, it's, it's way down the road that you're actually going to train in really full ranges of motion. So, and I, and I want to make a point of this because we communicate so often about training in full ranges of motion, and that's because hypermobility is is so rare. So we're talking to the general population. But if you have hypermobility, uh, you don't train in your full range of motion. Your full range of motion is dangerous. You're not trying to squat as far as you can, and and you know do uh, you know your flies as deep as you can. Uh, because you're so mobile, you're going to hurt your shoulders or your hips uh, or your knees. You need to train in a shortened range of motion. This is one of the few times you'll hear me say that. You need to train in a shortened range of motion. End your reps. Build that tension. Once you feel comfortable with that new strength, then you can test it a little further. But don't test your, your full range of motion. That's way down the line when you've built lots of strength 
uh, and stability. Well, I can hear it right now, though. There's a lot of people probably going like, well, am I hyper mobile then? And the, I think the answer is if you don't know you are, you're probably not. Yeah. If you're if you're like Lucy, Lucy Gumby, you know, if you're one of those people that can sit on the floor, uh, you know, on the floor, uh, you know, and, uh, what's that runner? What's that called? Hurdler stretch. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, or you just sit in a squat, like, you know, loosey goosey. If you kind of, it's typically somebody who's weak and hyper flexible. So like you could totally touch your toes, like mm -hmm. no problem. You could sit, like I said, hurdler stretch. If you find yourself most comfortable in these weird, awkward positions on the floor, again, this is more common for females. Um, and you don't have a lot of strength, then that's probably you. Uh, other than that, um, it's not super common. Uh, dancers, you find this, uh, it sometimes in dancers, although I will say that certain dancers, uh, are really strong. They're hypermobility. Yeah. They're Go strong. Ahead. They're, 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 they're a lot of dancers are strong through that range of motion. Cause they've been yeah, I was, dancing. I was going to say exactly. You know where I've seen this too? Um, sometimes people who do a lot of yoga, but they don't, uh, they don't maintain tension in the yoga poses. Mm -hmm. They just, they do like these long stretches. That's right. But, you know, uh, to be honest with you, the, the most of the times I've seen this, this is people who just, they're just like that. They're just born that they're way. Born yeah. that way, yeah. They don't even work out. They just come hire me and I do an assessment with them and I'm like, holy cow, you're like ridiculously flexible. Um, so we have some hypermobility issues. We're just lacking strength. And with that, make sure you go to mindpumpfree.com, download some of our guides, books, and resources. They're all totally free. You can also find the three of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.